Chapter 7, Inflation. In this video, we're going to talk about the basics of what inflation is. Hopefully you remember that inflation is just general prices going up. And by general prices, we mean kind of the average consumer prices in the country. If they're going up, we call that inflation. And if they're going down, that's deflation. Now, in order to measure this, the government puts together a price index. And there are various different types of price indexes. But the main way that the government calculates inflation is through something called the Consumer Price Index, or CPI. So that's what we're going to be learning in the next video. In order to calculate inflation, inflation is basically the rate of change. So in the green box here, we have your rate of change equation. You take two CPIs of two various time periods, and you calculate the rate of change between them. So the numerator here is the difference between those two values over the earlier of those two years times 100, and it gives you a percentage. Inflation is also used as a way to compare variables or prices from time period to time period. So if you're thinking about comparing your house today versus when you bought it 20 years ago, clearly prices have gone up in the last 20 years. So is your house actually more valuable or did the price just inflate over time? So you can calculate the rate of inflation and figure out how much value you have in your house. We also use inflation to calculate these real variables. Something that is real means that it's been adjusted for inflation or the inflation has been taken out of it so we can compare the real statistics as opposed to just inflationary prices. Inflation is also used by businesses and particularly banks to try to predict what we think inflation will be so that they can accurately charge you interest on loans. For example, if you borrow uh, money from a bank on a loan, they generally give you a number of years to pay it back. Those years extend into the future. But if the bank is going to, let's say, um, offer you a six-year loan because you want to buy a car, they're going to give you six years to pay it back. But as you pay back that money in the following six years, price inflation is going to happen. So the bank wants to accurately predict how much inflation is going to happen so that they can charge you the right amount of interest. If the bank undercharges you, then the money that you pay them back with for the next six years will not be able to buy them as many things. So just as an example here, Let's say the bank or the business predicted a certain level of inflation, and it turned out the actual inflation was higher than what the bank predicted. A couple of things happen here. That means that prices are now higher than normal. If your income has stayed the same and prices are now higher, it means you can't buy as many things or your purchasing power is lower. So here, if inflation is higher than what everybody predicted, borrowers, meaning people who borrowed money on a loan and are paying back that loan over time, are going to be winners because the bank set the interest rate on their loan, assuming a lower level of inflation. So when you pay your money back to the bank, the prices of the things that the bank wants to buy are higher than what they thought, and the money you're giving them does not go as far as they wanted. People who lended the money, in this case the bank, they're going to lose because they should have charged you a higher rate of interest but did not. And then, of course, anybody who's on a fixed income is going to lose when there's a lot of inflation. A fixed income means your income stays exactly the same regardless of prices. So a lot of times retirees get the same amount of money every year from their retirement account. If you get the same amount of income every year but the prices of your groceries and bills are going up, then your purchasing power is lower. In the other situation, if actual inflation turns out to be lower than what was predicted, then the opposite occurs. People who borrowed money from the bank lose because the money that they're paying back will be able to buy lots of things because the prices are lower than what we thought. And people who lended the money win.